So standalone components is something we have already since Angular 14. If you start a new project, then definitely go with them. And there is actually not the question if you should move from ng modules to standalone, you should do it. There is not really a reason why you should stick to ng modules. You get exclusive features with standalone components, for example, host directives or the new defer command. And you don't gain anything from having ng modules, except that you have some additional files lying around that aren't of any use. So please migrate to standalone as soon as possible. There is also an automatic migration script available. And last, there is a little bit of a misunderstanding that ng modules act as modules in that sense that they provide us encapsulation feature or features, which is not the case. This is a misunderstanding. There is another, there is another video from me where I explain how we can get real modules in Angular, but that's not the topic of this video. This one is about testing with standalone components, especially when it comes to mocking some of its dependencies. In terms of testing, in general, when you have a testing style where your test covers not just a particular component, but all its dependencies, then you have an easy time with standalone components. If on the other hand, you say you have some tests where you want to mock components, subcomponents, directives, or something else, you want to mock those away, then with the standalone component, it becomes a little bit trickier. And this is what I wanna focus on in this video. So this is the component that we want to test. It contains two parts. The first one on the left side is here is this input field where I can type in some kind of an address, which will be verified. And on the right side, we have some kind of preview data representing the holiday, which we are requesting the brochure for. Now, this is a standalone component. And if we take a look at the code, then we see our yeah, standalone true. We see it is importing all of its dependencies and there are some services there. That's fine. So it doesn't look that, that, that huge also in terms of code. Yeah, there is a lookup, there is an observable in place, but nothing really complicated. But the problem is always that maybe the hard part is hidden in one of those subcomponents. And that's the case here. So if I open here the request info component holiday card, this is the component that we see on the right side, which shows the, the Vienna or the preview for the holiday. Then we see that first of all, this holiday card contains a dependency to the activated route service. So there will be some dependencies for the routing system. And we also have here a dependency for holiday service. And if we open holiday service, then we see there is a complete NGRX store included. So the holidays repository is a facade to a complete NGRX feature state. So if we now look at the dependency graph of that request info component, then we see the following picture. The request info component has dependencies in terms of services, form builder, address lookup, that's nice, that's something we can handle. Also reactive forms module and the, 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 the four material buttons and material components that we have here. That's not the problem. The real problem comes with the request info holiday card component because that squeezes or fetches in the complete NGRX state with defects, with actions, with reduce. So we don't know what, what happens in there. And this is not something that I want to have in my test. You can say you want to have it, but there is quite a high chance that you say, no, 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 I want to mock away all the dependencies from that request info holiday card. And I want to focus more or less on the right side. Because if we look at the existing test, then we see here that we need to provide quite a lot of stuff coming from NGRX. So we're using a testbed configure testing module. Because it is a standalone component, we need to import it. We don't declare it. This is what we see here. And then we have here all those services that we need to provide. And most of them are for my holiday card component, not for the request info component itself. We only see here the services 
because we need to provide services which are not provided in root automatically. We need to provide them via the testbed. When it comes to the visual dependencies, the components, the pipes and the directives, then in the case of standalone, we don't have to care about them. They are all included. So, but what we want to do is that we want to get rid of that request info holiday card. So we want to achieve something like this here. Mock the request info holiday card with all its dependencies away. How do we do that? In the old days of uh, where, where, we have, where, we, where we still had the ng module, we first of all created some kind of mocked component. So I would say here, that's my mock request info holiday card component. And what is important now is that, these, uh, that, that the selector of that component has the same value as the component that I want to mock. So if I go to my request info component, to the holiday card, then we see that this is the selector. So this is the value that I take that I use here for my mocked component. And of course, now it is important that my mocked component doesn't contain any dependencies, no services, and no visual dependencies in the imports. Now, as I said, in the old days, we had to declare the request info component or we imported a module which declared this request info component. But when it came to mocking out the de sub-dependencies, then it was very easy. We just didn't declare the request info holiday card component and we more than we only used the mock request info holiday card instead. So it looked like this. So declarations, we had our request info component, and then we said, yeah, I'm going to use uh, that one here as well. And nobody really mentioned the original one, and then it just worked out of the box. Now, that was the old days. Uh, with the new, with, with standalone components, it works a little bit different. With standalone, I could say, okay, we have now my, my, my mock component there. It's also standalone. So what happens if I just add it here into the imports, would that now replace the original holiday card component? We can try it out. So the only thing that I need to do, I'm just going to remove those dependencies that are coming from the holiday card, which is the last second part here. Only the HTTP client is used. Of course, we also hear noob animations. If you ask yourself why I'm not using the testing module for HTTP client, it doesn't really matter. So I went here with a manual mock, but of course it's perfectly fine if you use the, the testing controller or the, the, and, and, the, and the testing module for the HTTP itself. Good. Either way, if now my mocking is working and replaces the original one, I can now run my test and it should just work. And it doesn't. So it's failing here with activated root and the problem again comes because still the old holiday card is in place. Why? Well, the reason is you can of course import here your mocked version of the card component, but you're not overwriting the original one because the original one is defined inside of the request info component, namely here. So you need to get access to the imports right here and not to the outside. That's the problem. There is a function for that, which allows us to do exactly this, but it, it's a little bit more complicated. So first of all, I can remove it because it didn't have any effect. And I say then here, okay, we have here my test bed. And I say not configure testing module, but I say override component. So I can override the decorator of a particular component. And I'm, go, I'm going for the request info component, obviously. And now I can decide how I want to override it. There are three options available. I can use the set. So I can say I want to replace, so I want to come up with my own imports array. Since we want to replace something, the holiday card, we don't want to override the complete imports array. We only want to remove one certain element and use another one instead. So the set property 
is not the thing that we are looking for. Instead, we say remove. So I say I want to remove something from the existing imports array. And what I want to remove is the request info holiday card. This one. And once I have removed it, I also want to add a new one. So I say here add. Let me quickly um, disable this. <laughs> it doesn't reload all the time. It makes me a little bit nervous. And then I say here imports. And I say, I want to use now my mocked version of it. And this should now work. So if I now rerun my test, we see the test is already working. No problems with uh, router, activated route service or whatever. Also NGRX is not there because now we have really mocked away that particular component. Now, if you have the choice, I would say it is important to know what you have to do in that case that you need to come up with an own component. But in general, I highly recommend you to use a third party library, which is doing that for you automatically. And the one that I always recommend in that case is the library ngmox. So with, with ngmox, you don't need this part. You also don't need to come up with that part manually. Everything that you do, that you go into your imports. Now it's allowed to use the imports. And there you call the function mock component. And as you see from my imports, it's coming from that library. And then you just say, okay, you provide here the original one. And what ngmox is then doing, it's internally creating that kind of mock request info component that I just did without any dependencies and make sure that in the testing module, that one is used instead of the original one. That was it already, a little bit of a late introduction. My name is Rainer Hanekamp. I'm a trainer and consultant at Angular Architects. And if you're interested in more about Angular testing, then our Angular testing workshop might be something for you. If you liked the video, please give it a like. Also subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, then please ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye.